I have a reoccurring problem when it comes to file structures. See, when I start a project, everything is all tidy. I put files in the right place, I create folders, and everything is all nice. If I create a function that is a util, I stick it in the util folder. But what happens is, one day I am rushing to fix a bug, or rushing to finish out a feature, and I might not put the file in the correct or right place. And on its own, this is not too bad. We got one thing that's kind of a little bit out of place. Um, but what tends to happen with me is this kind of accumulates over time, and I get to a point where I just don't even care anymore about where I put my files because it's just gone to a straight dumpster file. St dumpster fire. Uh, things are absolutely everywhere, and uh, I just don't care about organization anymore. And for someone who really likes everything to be in the right place, uh, this absolutely destroys me. Because I know you can do that, where you kind of just have a free-flowing file structure where you know you got some things that are kind of organically there and you're mixing paradigms uh, but for me I don't really like that and related to that a common question I see beginners and intermediate developers ask all the time is what is the right or the best file structure for a particular project or framework and this is just one such example that I've seen and it's stuck in my mind because Dan from the react team replied and actually built a website and told everyone his ideal file structure for projects. And uh, as you can see, the great idea is to move your files around until it feels right. And this may seem like a joke, but if we zoom in and scroll to the bottom of this website, we can see it is actually not a joke. And I actually agree with Dan here. I think this is a great approach. Just kind of shuffle things around and don't think about your file structure too much. I think a lot of people overthink it uh, way too much. And what I wanted to see if I could do is take this burden off of beginners and take this burden off of myself and all developers of having to shuffle around files. I wanted to see if I could build a tool that could just take a file structure or a group of files and prettyify that into a file structure. Kind of like Prettier, it takes our code and it formats for us and styles the code. And we don't even have to think about whether we should indent this or whether we shouldn't. It just does it for us and just alleviates the entire burden. I wanted to see if I could do the same thing for file structures. So when I was thinking about this idea, I ran across this tool called Plup. And how it works is you choose kind of like the type of file you're creating and the file name, and then it puts it into the right location. And a tool like this is not what I'm looking for. I don't want to spend any time assigning a file to a particular place. I want someone else to think about that. Or in this case, I want the computer or the algorithm to think about that for me. And I also want this to work on existing projects that have a file structure that may be super ugly or something totally different. And it can take that as input and then prettify it. So one of the first insights that I had to actually try structuring some code or someone's project is that if you take an existing JavaScript or TypeScript code base and you look at the imports, you can actually create a directed graph out of that. And so what I mean by that, if we look at VS Code on the left here, you notice I have three files, index.js, and inside of here I am importing from routes and then I'm just exporting. Um, but the important part here is I'm importing from routes. And if I go to routes, I can see that I am importing from home. And if I look at home, I can see it's just exporting something, in this case, 5. And so I can look at the chain of imports there and create a directed graph. In this case, it would look like this. So index imports from routes, and routes imports from home. Here's an example that is a little bit more complex. So in our top-level index.js file, we're importing from footer and from header. And then if we go inside of header, we can look at index.js. We can see that is importing a helper function here from helper. Right, and that just exports a random variable. And then footer, we can see it's also importing this helper function. And so what I can see is a little tree forms. So we have index, and then that imports footer and header, and then both of these import this helper.js file. And so you can start to see a little bit of a structure come together just from looking at the graph. And so we can take our directed graph of imports and apply some rules to it to generate a file structure. So what I did is I started with a simple rule set that is similar to the fractal pattern. And how it works is it takes a look at the dependencies. So for example, for index.js, 
it depends on footer and header. So what happens is it takes all of these and it sticks them in a folder called index. And we can see this is the resulting file structure. So I have index.js and then on the same level, I create a folder called index. And inside of that, I create footer and header.js. You also notice one other thing I made, I did for this to make it pretty is I got rid of this header slash index.js. So I wanted to get rid of as many index.js as, as I could. Uh, so I just renamed it to header and footer.js there. Uh, and then lastly, you can see that both of these files depend on this file, um, but you'll notice these are two different nodes. So what I do is I actually hoist this up to the same level as these two nodes because they rely on it. Um, and you can see here I created a shared folder and then helper.js shows there. So I took the insights and the rules that I just was talking about and stuck them in a proof of concept which I'm calling Butler or Butler CLI. Now I don't actually really like this name so if you have a better idea for a name for this tool please let me know. I would love to rename this. But anyway, the idea behind this is basically, yeah, it's a prettier for your file structures. And so how it works is number one, it's going to scan your files. So it's gonna go down a directory and find all the files that are in there. And then it's gonna look for imports. And specifically, we're talking about JavaScript and TypeScript files right now. It's gonna look for imports. And based on those imports, like I showed you, it's gonna create a directed graph. And then once you have that directed graph, it can compute a fractal representation of that graph. And then the last part is to just match the file system to that fractal representation, right? So it takes the existing files you have and it moves them to where they should be. And basically that will prettyify them. Now, when I move files around, imports break. So I also have to go back and fix the imports so everything is importing the right way. Uh, and then lastly, there may be some folders that are empty because we're moving files around now. So I just remove all of the old folders that used to exist and now are empty. And then lastly, what it does is it prints any unused files. So because I'm computing a directed graph, I can know exactly what files are being imported and which ones are not. So these are just some files that may you know, they're not being imported and they're not importing anything else. So they may just be old files or dead files that are not used anymore and you just don't know about them. Um, so I just print them out so you know. And the end result is a quote unquote prettyified file structure. And I say quote unquote because you actually may not think it is prettier. This is a very subjective thing on how you like your file structures. But what it will give you is a consistent and constrained structure. Um, so this can be a very powerful thing in teams or just for yourself if you want to make sure you are being consistent across your entire file structure. And now for a little demo to show you how it works. So I have a file structure on the left here and it is totally flat, but it doesn't matter what you actually start with. It can be super deeply nested. It's going to take whatever you have and format it. And so what I did here is I'm just saying MPX, Butler, CLI, and then my folder, in this case, the path to it, which is just source. And now when I run that, is going to do what I just explained. And you can see it also prints out the unused files. In this case, we can see this React app inf is not being used by anything. Um, in which this case I can see, you know, that's okay. This is okay to be an unused file, if you will. Um, but we can see the new structure here. So I can see the index files at the top and I can see the things that depend on index, in this case, app. And then I can just go through the different levels. So I have app here and inside of here, I can see all the different routes. And then I have a shared folder here where I see helpers. And now this is something where you can constantly run throughout your project as well. So it's something where you add a new file, you can run this, or before you commit, you can run this and make it pretty. So for example here, uh, let's say I have this add function, which is in the helper class. Um, let's say I refactor this out into its own function because this is getting huge, you know? So we're gonna right click, refactor, uh, move to a new file. And so I'm gonna save this. And now you can see I have an add file uh, and shared here. And now that I've split this off into its own file, the file structure should change depending on what depends on this. And so what I can do is I can come back here, I can run it again, and then things will slightly change depending on that new dependency. Uh, so you can see in this case, we don't need to have a shared folder anymore. We can see now home depends on the add function and the helper now goes in the post folder here. The whole purpose behind this fractal pattern for folder structures is now you have a nice view of the dependencies of a particular file. So all the things that I need to create home.tsx sits in the home folder. 
And so when I don't need this anymore, what I can do is I can just remove this home folder and remove this home file. And then all the dependencies that I had are gone. So you don't have a lot of dead components that can just be sitting around, which can be pretty nice for just cleaning things up. Now, a few disclaimers before you actually try this. The first is, it's a work in progress and there's 100% going to be some bugs in it and there's gonna be some edge cases which are not flushed out yet and may crash the program or might give you weird results. So before you actually run this on your code base, I beg you, please make a backup of it or just commit to Git uh, before you run this and then you can just reset it if you need to. And I actually haven't tested this on Windows yet. I think it should work because I'm using the path module um, but we will find out if it crashes or not. And lastly, snapshot tests, at least like the file that it generates when you run a snapshot test, may not go to the correct location. Haven't really fixed that yet. Uh, one thing I noticed when actually making this project is it was a lot more complex than I thought it would be. And I realize now I probably don't have the bandwidth to make this a complete 100% correctly working thing without the help of the community. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to show you kind of the concepts behind it and how it works to see if anyone besides myself would actually be interested in using a tool like this or would like to help work on it. Because I think it's quite possible that this is totally useless. It may just be better to move the folders and name the folders yourself than trying to automate this because it does give you kind of some weird file structures sometimes. And it's also possible that this can kind of be tuned out with say a configuration file and we try some different rule sets besides say just the fractal pattern. Um, but I kind of wanted to get feedback from you guys uh, what you thought about just the concept in general. Is something like this, you do think it will be useful to format your file structures like that? Or do you think this is kind of an eh idea and it's better to just go about moving stuff yourself. So let me know in the comments below. I'm very interested to see your reaction.